Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, glad that you're with us again as we uh, spend some time diving into God's Word. Uh, today we're going to take a look at Acts chapter 13, and we're also going to take a look at Jeremiah uh, chapter 23. And so I would invite you uh, to grab a Bible uh, to turn with me there, uh, and we're going to start in the book of Acts for today. You know, but before we dive in, I want to ask, what good can come from all of this? You know, for many of us, our lives have uh, dramatically changed. We may be working from home. We may uh, not be working at all. We may be homeschooling our kids. Uh, whoever thought that would happen. Uh, and we may be doing all sorts of things that were unexpected, uh, that we haven't planned for. And uh, what good can come from all of this that has happened because of a, a virus uh, that is spreading across our country? Uh, and I wonder how many of you have asked yourself that question. And in a way, it feels a little wrong, or, or perhaps uh, maybe it's a little too early to, to really have that conversation. Uh, but as a pastor, I've started to see that popping up uh, in various places, on pastors' blogs, on um, websites where we uh, pastors share ideas and information. Um that question has come up a number of times. What good can come from all that is happening in our world right now? You know, a couple of things that come to my mind right away are, uh, first and foremost, it gives us a chance to uh, spend some time with loved ones. Uh, you know, I heard a joke. It was uh, a husband who realized that there were no sports on TV, and he turned and he looked to his right, and he saw a woman sitting there, and it turns out it was his wife. Uh, you know, it's more time spent with loved ones. It's more conversations with, with friends and neighbors. Maybe it's conversations with people that we haven't talked to in quite some time. Maybe it's conversations with people who live great distances away from us that we've lost contact with. But now uh, we want to know how they're doing. We want to make sure that they're doing okay. Uh, maybe it's it's more unhurried time uh, rather than our crazy busy schedules that were often um, packed to the brim with activities and sporting events and and who knows what else. Uh, it's time to slow down. Time to really think about what's important in life. You know, maybe it's a maybe it's a focus on on the vulnerable. Uh, maybe it's time to to take a look at those who are um, often the most vulnerable in our society those who we often overlook. Um, maybe it's time to think about, you know, as we feel isolated and alone, think of those who sit in nursing homes by themselves day after day. Uh, they're alone. Um, maybe we can use this as motivation to reach out to them, to, uh, to continue to show them care and love after all of this is done. Uh, but most of all, I think it's a, it's a wonderful time uh, to spend time in God's Word, it's time to uh, take a look at our relationship with God. It's time to be spent in prayer, time to uh, strengthen our relationship with God, to, to see what our faith is really made of. Uh, I think that's one of the benefits, one of the good things that come out of this whole thing. And so let me ask yourself, ask you, uh, what good can come from all of this that is happening in your life right now. You know, early on as this all started happening, uh, I, I prayed to God and believe me, I spent and have spent and will continue to spend a, a great deal of time in prayer. And one of the things that I have been praying for is that God would do something unbelievably good in the world, something unanticipated and undeniable that would be shown to us, that would be brought forth by God's hand, that we would see that, we would hear the stories of how God provides and gets his people through, that we would see stories and hear stories of, of God's people showing love and, and grace and being the, the light of Christ shining on the hill for all the world to see. Uh, I started to pray for healing in, in broken homes. Uh, I prayed for and still am praying for communities to be lifted up and, and brought together. 
I've been praying for a miraculous healing to be discovered for, for those who are sick. Um, and I started to pray that, that God would just work mightily, uh, that he would, he would strengthen his people, uh, and the communities in which we live in our country and in our world, that, that the church would shine out, that they would continue to hold out the gospel message for the world to see. Uh, this is the time where our, uh, our faith, uh, the rubber really meets the road right now. And so that's been my prayer. You know, in Acts chapter 13, I was struck by how the early church in Antioch, that's uh, what is now modern day Syria, was led by the Holy Spirit to send out Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey. This is Acts chapter 13. This is what this whole chapter is about. And after they went to the island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean, they went to another city named Antioch, which is in modern day Turkey where they boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus to anyone and uh, everyone and anyone who would listen to them. And if you look at Paul's sermon, <coughs> excuse me, if you would look at Paul's sermon in Acts chapter 13, uh, specifically verses 16 through 40, uh, and you back up and you take a look at Stephen and what he preached in Jerusalem uh, when he was under the threat of being killed for his faith, they are very similar. Uh, and it's what's obvious, however, is, is that those listening to Stephen, they rose up in anger, and what did they do? Uh, they killed him. In Paul's case, uh, they're in a different place. Uh, the situation is a little different. But Paul preaches a very similar message uh, to what Stephen preached, and... They didn't want to kill him. In fact, uh, they wanted to hear more. They wanted him to keep telling them more about what God had done. In fact, the very next week when they normally would have gathered for worship in the Jewish synagogue, and uh, there must have been a a small community of Jewish people there because apparently it was there were enough of them that they were able to uh, come up with a place to worship. Uh, A synagogue is established. Uh, but this time, the whole town comes to the synagogue to hear Paul preach. You know, while I love what Jesus is doing right now, uh, I love to see the innovation, uh, the way that God's church is, is reaching out with the gospel through live streaming and through uh, worship and, and connections that we are making virtually. Uh, the truth is, is that uh, the thing that keeps me going right now, is looking forward to the day that we can all be together again. I can't wait for that day. It's going to be so great to celebrate the the truth that God has been with us in the past. He's gotten us through this difficult moment, and that we can trust him in the future because he has once again proved that he is faithful, that he loves and cares for you and me. I can't wait to join together with all of you. What a joyous day that is going to be. I can't wait to gather again with God's people to celebrate that that victory that we have in Jesus. I can't wait uh, to, to gather around the table with all of God's people and celebrate God's grace and forgiveness being poured out for us again. I can't wait to see what new hope what new joy, what what new faith, and what new life in Jesus will have been worked in our communities, in our cities, in our country, and even our world. I can't wait for that day. It's going to be a joyous day. It's going to be a great day. And we're going to celebrate. You know, Easter is not going to be the same this year without everyone here but we are going to pull out all the stops that first Sunday back. Believe me, we are going to celebrate and we are going to thank God for all that he has done for his people. And so I hope, you know, I, I don't have a ton of scripture here for, here for you from Acts, but I would encourage you to look at, at Paul's sermon. But I, I pray that you will join me in praying that God would just work mightily, that God would uh, work new faith, 
that he would continue to work through you and me to be the light of Christ, to be the, the city shining on the hill, that, that more would come to see God's love through us. And that we would connect people to Christ in a, in a spectacular way. I pray that we would use this time to do exactly that. And that when we get together again, we can celebrate that with all of the festivities, with all joy and knowing that God is with us and that he's gotten us through this difficult time. I pray that God would use this time to just increase faith, that he would bring people to faith. And I hope you will join me in praying for those exact things. You know, as we jump over to kind of our, our Old Testament lessons that we've been going through for the last couple of weeks, uh, I want to take a look at Jeremiah <clears throat> chapter 3. You know, in bringing forth his judgment, God was uniquely concerned with uh, those who in their roles as prophets were spreading lies instead of the truth, and they were leading people deeper into sin, both by their actions and by the messages that they were preached. God is concerned about the false prophets, uh, those who are, are claiming that they're from God, but they're leading people astray. Uh, take a look at verse, uh, chapter 23, verse 14. You know, but in the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns from his evil. All of them have become like Sodom to me and its inhabitants like Gomorrah. You know, rather than calling God's, uh, rather than calling these, these false prophets to repentance, God is concerned with how they have led people astray. And after sending Jeremiah repeatedly to confront these these false teachers, these false prophets, uh, God has seen enough and was, he's prepared to, to pour out his anger and his wrath upon them. Jump over to verses 19 and 20. There we hear how God's going to, uh, respond to these, these false prophets, these false teachers. He says, uh, behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand it clearly. At the heart of the matter was how they handled, or truth be told, how they mishandled God's word, as well as how they viewed God himself. If you want to see how they viewed God, take a look at verses uh, 23 and 24. Uh, there they say, am I a God at hand declares, am I a God at hand declares the Lord and not a God far away? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who have prophecy, who have, who prophesy lies in my name saying I have dreamed, I have dreamed. For those who had perverted the word of God, the words of the living God, the, the Lord of hosts, our God, God promises that he is going to come like a, a consuming fire, like a sledgehammer, that he's going to bring his full wrath and justice on those who, who have mistreated the word of God. Take a look at verse 29. Is it not like a fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? You know, we don't have to be afraid that we're mishandling the truth. It's our goal. It's our job to hold out Christ, uh, to share his love with others. That is what, that is the truth that we hold out, that God loves us so much that he sent his one and only son for us, that we might have the gift of eternal life. It's John 3.16. It's God's promise that he'll never leave us, never forsake us. It's God's promise that he loves us and that he cares for us and that we can share that good news, that we can share the very heart of God with those in our world right now who need peace. That's the message that you and I, that we are called to hold out to the world. It's not a false message of hope, but rather it's the wonderful good news of God's love of his grace, his mercy, and his forgiveness. And so we do that. 
We do exactly that. We use the, the time and the situations that we've been given to, to speak peace into, pe- into people's lives that are full of unrest and worry and doubt. It's, it's calming hearts with the good news of the gospel that God is with us, that he has been with us in the past and that he's gotten us through difficult times before. He's with us now and he'll be with us well into the future. It's God's promise. That we can cast all of our worries, all of our anxieties, all of our feelings of, of loneliness, of despair on God. That we can share them with him because the truth is, is that he loves us. And we see that love poured out for us in Jesus. Those are the things that we hold out right now. Those are the words of comfort the message of peace that we can share with people right now. We don't have to worry about God's consuming wrath because we know the full truth that God loves us. And then he sent his one only son to die for us so that we might have the hope of eternal life. And so it's it's with great joy, and I would challenge you uh, to find ways to, to uniquely hold out that message in your life right now. Uh, Continue to be that light shining on a hill. Continue to hold out the truth, the good news of Jesus for the world to see. And may God bless that message that we, we share with others. May he work through it that many more might receive the, the wonderful gift of faith that they might be connected to Christ. That is our hope. That is our prayer. And so once again, join me in praying that God would work miraculously through this. That we would see faith that is stronger than ever before when we come out on the other side of this. I hope you join me in that prayer. Uh, God's blessings to you, and I will see you again tomorrow. God bless.